Welcome back, everyone, to episode 31 of the Mind Not Business Podcast presented by Bennett Creative Media. I am your host, Easton Bennett, and today we have a special guest, Dusty Wall. Dusty, your first episode of 2023. How exciting is that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm excited to be the uh, second Dustin on the podcast. I'm, there you go. Yep, behind Dustin my, Miller. Yeah, I was teasing my neighbor, Becky, the other day. Be the second one from Green Acres. And okay. And since you asked my cousin John first, I'm the second guy you asked. <laughs> okay. City Beverage, well, it's so. fine. It's funny because I, uh, I text John and I said, hey... John, come on the come on the show, and then he said, "Nope, Dusty will." And I said, <laughs> "Okay," and, I, and he gave me your number. I was like, ah, "I got his number," so I shot you a text. But hey, you know, uh, second best. What do the, what do they say on Talladega Nights? More than Talladega Nights shirts. Yeah, if yeah. you're not first, you're last. That's right. There you go. Well, thanks for having me. First, uh, you guys are doing some impressive stuff down here. Hey, thank you. Uh, Magic City Beverage did use Bennett Creative Media this summer, so yep. maybe you can splice in some of your uh, computer wizardry with some of the stuff you took for us yep this year. The, the Clydesdales were here which was a fun time I've never seen those things before and those things were freaking massive bro yeah, you did a good job thank you it was a good time and thanks hey thanks for bringing on for that project you'll have to tell John uh thanks too so let's get right into it Dusty what do you do for people that don't know which I think might be slim and far between but what do you do you know maybe you, you see someone at a bus stop and they're like hey what do you do what do you tell them yep I uh, ride the bus one of my favorite things to do <laughs> um you know, Magic City Beverage and Minot, uh, cousin John and I uh, run the operation. We sell alcoholic beverages, non health beverages, wine, liquor. Yep. Uh, big territory, a lot of accounts. You know, just uh, we joke that I'm the director of fun and the president <laughs> of parties out there. So. <laughs> there you go. So what's John's title then? Yeah, he's he's the president of parties too. You know? <laughs> okay. I should be the vice president. That's yep. right. There you okay. go. So uh, do you have like a favorite uh beverage that you got that you personally dusty like to distribute well yeah i'm a budweiser guy through okay. and through um it's been a family business i've been around it my whole life uh yeah just i've always wanted to go to the warehouse i always wanted yep. to go out see the big trucks i was fascinated by the big strong delivery guys that could lift me up uh, <laughs> okay it's just been it's been fun and so yeah a couple of years ago i had the opportunity and do they still lift you up uh, no, unfortunately, uh, drink a few Budweiser's, not too many guys can lift me up. Anymore, yeah. But. So how long have you been working for Magic City Beverage then? Um, back in the day, I guess my start was vacuuming out the uh, office gal Janet's car, and then I get to pick a t-shirt out. And okay. I couldn't lift a case of beer, so they put me on the chip route. Uh, Anheuser Bush had a line of um, snacks back in the day called Eagle Snacks, and so Frankie okay. and I, I couldn't lift a case of beer, so Frank was stuck with me. He's still working out there, uh, does a great job. But yeah, I'd, I'd go out on the trucks and put the chips away and slowly evolved into delivery. And, you know, times have changed where if you weren't 21, you could be out on the delivery route a little bit and yep. uh, you didn't get to go in the establishment, but you could stack down cases and, and help deliver. Uh, that was a, you know, a summer deal after school. Uh, I left for a few years to go to college at the University of Minnesota, um, came back in the summers to haul beer. I mean, it was, it's just a fun job to, to be around. The guys are always good. Uh, the small group of guys we have out there, it's been some longevity, so it's the same faces every time. And then summer guys would uh, would join back up, and we'd have ourselves a fun little summer delivering beer. And Okay. You know, so, fun. so is that rule changed now then? If you're under 21, can you go in now, or is that just an old-time thing? You know, it wasn't really a rule, but, you know, the laws and stuff and the way society's gone, it's just not okay. a good look to have, yeah. have that stuff around. So we don't put anyone under 21 on the truck anymore. We do employ mm -hmm. a few guys in the summer that stay back at the warehouse and just yeah. help set up because – it's a, it's a pretty simple business, but it's also complex yeah. and, and a lot going on. And that's one thing. I want to get into the logistics a little bit down the road because obviously you guys are moving a shit ton of product, and I kind of want to ask some questions about that. But let's start from the beginning. Do you know the story of Magic City Beverage? How did that start? You guys just had your 70th anniversary you know, this summer um, when the Clydesdales were here. How? What is the origin story of Magic City Beverage? Back all the way up to Grandpa Sai. I uh, had a dream, started selling candy and tobacco, and uh, it was a one-man show out peddling all the way out to Montana and back. Uh, picked up a couple breweries. Um, you get Anheuser Bush knocking on the door. Um, he took a leap of faith, got rid of some other suppliers, took on Anheuser Bush. Uh, the rest is history. Okay. Um, right now, currently, we've got like 52 different suppliers. Mm -hmm. um, I asked this morning. I said, "How many SKUs do you think we have?" And everyone kind of rolls their eyes. And uh, we just did a quick spreadsheet. It was like. 1219 SKUs or wow. something like that that are currently in stock uh, that stuff's constantly changing all year so and a SKU it, number for the people that don't know is like a specific product correct yeah. so like Budweiser would be a SKU so well Budweiser would be one of the SKUs yes. but like 
You can get Budweiser in a four six bottle. You can get it in a loose can. You can okay. get it in a twelve pack can. You can get it in a seven ounce. You can oh, get gotcha. it in a keg, a forty, a twenty five ounce can, an eighteen pack. I mean, okay. it's just so one brand Budweiser has a lot of skews under yep. it. Then you move into other brands, and that's where all the, they start to add up. Okay, so Sai started this with tobacco and candy. Did he originally start it as like a distributor or was he selling it directly to consumer? Or how did it start? Yep. So anytime you get into alcohol, like the, you know, the rules start to change federally and you've got to, you know, you have to have a license and, and stuff like that. But I, I think the candy, you can basically just wholesale, go around, try to find customers. Um, now, today, somebody has to file with the state, get a, get a beer, wine or liquor license. Yep. Uh, they got to get a city license. Once they have that, then we are allowed to sell to them. We can't sell to the general public. We can only sell to the people that have that license. Okay. So it's evolved, I suppose, from, from the days where you load up a car and I mean, we've got energy drinks and to, to get those things started, it literally even, you know, 10 years ago was throw it in a back of a trunk, go out and ask a few of our friends if they wouldn't mind, give us a row in the cooler to try it build up some national brands that get purchased, you get another one, you do the same thing. So even though it's changed and we're at our 70th anniversary, I mean, it's still business is the same thing. You've got to have relationships. You've got to knock on the doors and ask these people for favors and hope they give you a chance. Yep. So we're going to get into that a little bit down the road. I want to talk about Dusty a little bit growing up. So you kind of always knew you're going to be in the beverage industry. Yep. I think I really got my start uh, is when your dad was my babysitter back in the day. So (laughs) shout out to Jason Bennett babysitting. Yep. Um, Yeah. It's just, I've been around the business, uh, my whole life, um, I did know that I wanted to be in it. I didn't know that this, that's where the path would go. Mm-hmm. Um, went off to college, got an economics degree, didn't, you know, work for some stuff down there. The job I was, I had, I really didn't care for. So I called up the Anheuser Busch wholesaler in St. Paul and I said, Hey, you got a job for a, for a guy that knows the business. And they took me right away. And, okay. um, so yeah, you worked in Minnesota for a little bit then? I did. Yeah. Capital okay. beverage in St. Paul took me on for a while as a driver helper and yeah, it was fun to fun to see a different market, a a, a more you know city market. Yeah. We're we're a little rural here, so we have yeah. a lot of miles to cover. But everything they did in Minneapolis, St. Paul was was a, a larger you know scale than yeah. what we do here. But yeah, so it's what the same thing? What the transition look like from you moving from Minneapolis to Minot then? So the, there was a salesman then? that uh, was going to be moving on, and so they said there was a position if you're interested in moving back to North Dakota. So. We uh, picked up shop and we came back. I think that was around 2002. Uh, started out on the sales route there. Okay. Um, I had routes up in Botno. I had rugby. Uh, our territory goes from the Canadian border to Williston down to Totten Trail at the lake there, all the way over to rugby. So okay. it's a it's a pretty vast territory that we cover. And I did all that for many, many years. So it's... Because uh, that's what I was kind of wondering, if you guys just cover the Minot area or if you guys are... I, I knew you went outside of the Minot area a little bit, but how far do you go then? Is it all over North Dakota or where? Nope. Well, uh, sorry. When you're dealing with an alcoholic supplier, like I just keep saying Anheuser-Busch, but yep. you know, Summit <clears throat> or Bells or Anheuser-Busch or mm-hmm. all these different breweries, they give you a territory and they tell you, here's where you're allowed to sell our products. And then, oh, okay. then we cover everybody inside that territory that holds that state and mm-hmm. city liquor license. And so, like I, like I said, we go all the way over to Williston, but we don't carry our entire portfolio in Williston. We go okay. all the way up to Portal up on the Canadian border. We go over to Lake Metagoshi. Because um, I suppose there's other distributors and, you know, correct. maybe there's one in Bismarck or, because I thought there was one in Bismarck. Isn't yep. there a big one in? So Anna's or uh, Bushel Sailors, there's one in, so Minot, Williston, Dickinson, Bismarck, okay. Valley City, Fargo, Grand Forks, okay. Devil's Lake. So there, there's multiple of them around the state. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So we knew you're going into the beverage industry. Uh, what does the day to day look like for Dusty Wald? You that's, know, an inside look into the industry. Yeah. That's my favorite part of my job. I, like have, I just go on podcasts and drink beer. I have no <laughs> clue what I'm doing. Yeah. Like podcast, drinking beer with these. Yeah. I never thought would be, be on my thing. So check it off the bucket list. Yeah. I, like, I mean, now my role has changed a little bit. Uh, I'm dealing more with suppliers directly than when I was selling or, you know, you're dealing with owners of bars and liquor stores on a daily basis, trying to do some stuff, getting products placed. You're always worrying about displays, ads, rotating, trying to hang neons in the best spots. I mean, there's a yeah. lot, there's a lot to, to getting you to choose Budweiser when you're in the bar ordering. Um, yeah. So now, now it's, so your day doesn't look a ton like meetings, meetings, meetings. Oh it's, yeah. COVID has changed everything now with the invention of zoom. It's, yep. it's so much more easy for companies to say, Hey, can we get a quick hour with you before yep. it was, Hey, we're going to come to town in a couple of weeks. Can you set aside a morning? Sure. Yeah. Now it's 
tomorrow they okay. ask if you can set aside and you, you have to answer yes. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of meetings. It's a lot of decision-making. Um, we're picking up a new vineyard here and it's been going back and forth. You're trying to iron out logistics of picking it up from California and getting it here. And then, okay. you know, getting our sales sheets ready and getting the guys knowing it's coming. And then what's the plan when it, it hits the ground so we can get it in a market and you guys can start trying it. So how, how did you learn all that stuff? Is it just through experience working in the business or, you know, how yep. can somebody learn that? If, you know, if, if we're giving advice on the show, how can someone get into that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, I, I listened to all your podcasts and one of the things you ask is who, who are your mentors? And yeah. so, you know, grandpa Sai was the driving force, my uncle Jock, my dad, Pat, cousin mm-hmm. John, uh, I've, I've watched how they've operated. I'm lucky that their knowledge and their information and the experiences they've had, um, you're along for the ride, but you're in a different, you know, part of the business. Yeah. And now when you move into a different role, it's, it's just the wealth of knowledge John has is, uh, it, it's great mm-hmm. and it makes, it makes everything easy, you know, and now it's just, you get together and try to decide what should we do going yeah. forward. <clears throat> We've talked about getting rid of some SKUs. We've talked about, you know, do we really need everything that's in here? But yeah. when you add up the bottom end of your portfolio, it, it's a lot. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, you, you just keep plugging forward. So is there one product then that you, that's kind of like the main one that you guys, that you're staple, I guess you could say. Well, uh, yeah, I guess beer. I mean, we're yeah. The, we're the is there one guys. specific beer? Um, it, it like changes. Whether it's Bud it ev- Light, Budweiser. Yeah, it changes. It evolves. Like, you know, Bush Light is on fire right now. But Okay. Nobody, All those college kids. Yeah. Nobody can really take credit for why it's doing that. I yeah. mean, we know that there's national advertising. We know that people are are out talking about it, but at the same time, it's nothing, no decision I've made. It's nothing anyone at our warehouse is doing. It's, yeah. it's, it's a good beer. It's, it's finally caught on and the ebbs and flows of our business, you know, I mean, I, I go back to my other grandpa, uh, owned a grocery store. And when he started that, you think I could sell bottled water? You're crazy. Yeah. And now we're selling seltzers mm-hmm. water with alcohol in them. I mean, they're just screaming, next? they're screaming a flavor into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Here, and we'll give you a beverage that has energy in it, and yeah. you'll be able to go all day. Yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, so, so <laughs> I'm I not going to lie. I'm a sucker for those ghost energies. You <laughs> yeah. see them on the show. I have them. Literally, last week, I had uh, I had the same ghost, the tropical one, is just sitting yeah. here. And yeah. Every time I have one, I think about you, Dusty. I I'm appreciate like, that. Yeah, these ghost energies. I noticed it, so I, I brought you a 12-pack today, so you can hey, I appreciate continue it. to enjoy them. I appreciate it. So I want to go into the product side of things a little bit. Uh, what does it look like when there's a new product? Um, a couple weeks ago, you showed me... Uh, uh, Carbless, I think it was called. Yep. So what does it look like when maybe there's a new product that comes out? Uh, do you guys know you're getting it? Uh, do you have to reach out to get it? What does that look like? Yeah, you don't know if you're going to get it. If if you've got a supplier in-house that's rolling a new product, you know you're going to get it. But when there's somebody completely new to the market like Carbless, you, you see them at conventions, you go to national events and you, you see this, you don't know because there are thousands of new products coming every year. Yeah. What, you know, what, what's going to take off? I Mm-hmm. no amount of experience is going to know what the next one is going to do and, and, and how or why it's doing it. And so you, you meet with them, you talk to them, you hope they have their ducks in a row. Then you ask for some samples. You let your guys try it. Yeah. You know, what, what's new about this? It's five, cal- you know, five grams, it's zero mm-hmm. carbs. It's a hundred calories. What no yeah. sugars, like what's, what's the tagline? What's going to push the public's buttons to take it. And okay. so our guys, our guys tried it. They said, yeah, there's a little flavor here. Let's, you know, let's give it a whirl. Then you meet with them and then they come to the market and then the product shows up and yeah, you hit the ground running. So that, that okay. one's been around for two weeks, but you know, like, you know, summit, you know, they'll roll, you know, summit Dakota soul. They use our neighbors at the lake, the stut rude boys. Yep. They, they grow the grain in rugby. They played on it for quite a few years. Oh, and, really? and now I think come February or March, like Dakota soul is going to go away. They'll have something in the pipeline. It, it'll, it'll, something will come down to replace yeah. that. But the, the ebbs and flows stuff doesn't always guarantee that it's coming once they, have it in the test market and it doesn't always mean that it's going to last once it okay. comes. So. so are you guys going to conventions and events where you're, it's almost like a big, you know, whatever it might be a convention, I guess is the right word where you're just taking samples of everything or. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's a real tough job. You know, you gotta, gotta go to these conventions. <laughs> you're like, Oh, I get so drunk during look at, these conventions. Look at that pretty red liquid. I'm yeah. going to try that. Um, current suppliers have meetings all the time. We're always going to breweries and, and checking on their stuff. They'll, they'll outline their plan for next year. Tell us what's coming. Sometimes they have the samples. Sometimes they don't. Um, you can go to national conventions like in Vegas where it's all new, new products. People are trying to find wholesalers. They're mm-hmm. trying to find people to take on their products. And you, you, you see some winners and you see some 
you know, obvious losers right out of the gate. Yeah. So, but you, you know, it's, it's like, this tastes like ass. Yeah. This is bad. I, these guys <laughs> don't have a shot, but somewhere somebody will buy yeah. it and, and they'll, they'll, they'll take off. Well, you know, so. PT Barnum said there's a sucker born every day. That's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what my dad always tells me. My, my sister's son will buy man. something. He's my baby. <laughs> yeah. My sister's buy something dumb and he'll say, you know, PT Barnum sucker born every day. Hey. So do you guys work then if you're looking to get product in your warehouse, do you have a specific supplier that's like, hey, here's what we have? Or are you going to the individual companies? What does that look like? Um, well, so a lot of our, almost every one of our suppliers has somebody that's taking care of the region. There, okay. are, there are a few that, you know, are so big and so far away. And we liked it that we have, you know, literally no contact with. But yeah, um, that's, that's rare. Um, you, you have, you have somebody that's checking on you. Hey, this is coming down the pipe. Hey, you got to execute this a little better. Yeah. You know, uh, the Anheuser-Busch guy lives in Bismarck. He's coming up tonight for a Christmas party. Mm-hmm. He'll meet all our guys. Everybody sees him a lot. You might run into another guy who, you know, we haven't had a supplier visit in five years and they were just here two weeks ago. Yeah. You, you don't sell a lot of product for them, but you feel bad, but Hey, they're taking the time to come out. And, yeah. Yeah. So, and then you take them out to the local spots. Correct. Show them a, yeah, show them a time a around that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God, I envy you, Dusty. <laughs> this must be hard for you. Uh, so we kind of talked about you guys choosing products. Um, gosh, I had a question. I lost it. I do want to say, though, like everybody sees us out and we go to national conventions and get the sample, but yeah. no, one, no one sees that the phone never shuts off and that you're actually the snowplow guy at yeah. 3.30 in the morning last week and you're making the tough calls of... You know, you, you got 30 guys at the warehouse and you've got them on the road. Like it's okay. a small family. Like we care about these guys. There's a lot of stress. You worry, you know, Hey, it's mm-hmm. always up to our salesman. You're heading out. One guy was going to Harvey yesterday and he called and he says, it's glare ice. I'm turning around. Please do. Your yeah. safety is way more important than a. So it's not all beer. just, it's just sampling. Yeah. It's not all feet yeah. up and cold cocktails, yeah. and beers going down and nothing to worry about. So how so. does that work? Maybe there's, we can talk about a challenge that you guys probably have to face. You live in North Dakota. Yeah. There's snowstorms that come about. How do you guys work around not being able to get the trucks out on the roads? Uh, I'll try to go fast, but just last week was probably one of the most difficult weeks I've seen in 10, 15 years. Yeah. Monday, we knew the snow was coming. It's always a gamble to try to screw up your whole week in anticipation because yep. about the time you screw up your entire business for a week, the snow wouldn't come. <laughs> and so we decided, Hey, we're going to try to get done with everything in the town of mine on Monday and Tuesday. And if we're allowed to go, we'll get the stuff that went out of town Monday and Tuesday later in the week. Okay. Well, that didn't happen. So, yeah. uh, everybody's, our salesmen are out and about selling all the product. It's coming into the warehouse. They're setting it up. And now there's nowhere to put it. So we literally have a disaster around our warehouse right now. And it, it finally, this product's starting to creep out, but yeah, I mean, out of town bars in the rural area, they kind of know that we're kind of in this situation every winter that you might order 10 cases tomorrow. It might not show up. Yeah. And so we're, we made the decision last week on Wednesday not to go. Guys got off a little early Thursday, got off a little earlier. And then Friday we decided at nine, 10 o'clock and. I mean, that took an hour and a half at nine o'clock at night to say, Hey, we're not working tomorrow. Yeah. Well, you got customers are upset. They want their product. They got businesses to run. We understand that. Are people kind of like, do they have some leeway because they know like we live in North Dakota, the roads are shit. Yep. Uh, And we've always tried to say that. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get to you. And so we'll be back this week, but it really screwed things up last Mm -hmm. week and we're working through the challenges, but. Well, there you go. I mean, yeah, that's kind of something you got to deal with when you live in we all choose to live in this lovely uh, North Dakota winter. It's a it's a good time. So, getting new products, you get the new products into the warehouse. Uh, you then have to go show it to your clients, bars, liquor stores. You know the whole works. What's that like? Is that something you kind of go to a you know whatever bar it might be and just say, hey, we got this new stuff, yep. give her a shot, or what does that look like? Yep, uh, new product came in a couple of weeks ago. I was with the owner of the company going around trying to sell it in. Um, he sold it in with the. Um, I promised, he promised that we would come around and do a sampling with them one night. So, uh, Friday night, uh, bingo was their big night. The owner of this establishment wanted me to come in and sample on a Friday. I wasn't about to make my sales guys do that on a Friday night. Their time, their families are important too. So yep. I literally was walking around with trays of, uh, the beverage, uh, explaining what it was. It took me two hours. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's time away from my family, but I'm not, you know, manually Ooh. shoveling snow or anything. I'm handing out yeah. a beverage that most people are liking. And, yeah, Waiter was, Dusty. It was, yeah, it was pretty <laughs> good. So I was, yeah, I was a little red in the face and sweating, and but okay. I did my job. There you go. So then that's the same. Obviously, that's a bar. 
you guys, I assume, distribute to liquor stores too. Is that something where you just go in with the liquor store and say, hey, do you guys want to carry this? 100%. Um, some of the bigger corporate chains have to have it mandated. Um, it's got to come from someone, say, like in Minneapolis, that'll say this is okay. approved. Um, some of the local ones uh, we've got good relationship with and our salesmen know you can walk in and say, hey, I got a new product. Are you willing to try this? Yeah. They ask the prices. They ask what their margin is. They decide what the buy is. Do they have any space? Can they get it on the shelf? Can we get it on the floor? Yeah. I mean, it's there's a lot to it. And, uh, you know, I, I've always said we've got to sell these products, one bottle, one can, one 12 pack at a time. Yeah. Uh, just because someone's not drinking our product doesn't mean they can't mm-hmm. eventually drink our product. But at the same time, just because someone is buying our product doesn't mean the next forever. decision has to be ours. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, it's, uh, I think we run a pretty well tuned machine. Um, the point of sale, we have an in- in-house sign shop. We are, when we walk in as, oh, really? as management, we're looking around. If something doesn't have a price, what are the chances Easton's going to buy it? Yeah. something that doesn't have a price on it? Why isn't yeah. it price? Is it too expensive? Is it cheap? What's okay. going on here? So if, if you don't have... So all, sign shop, you guys have like an in-house, like you're making the neon signs? Is that what you mean? Not neons, but like, uh, so like if something's going to be nine ninety nine a 12 pack, oh, gotcha, you can grab gotcha. a logo. Okay. Uh, nine ninety nine a 12 pack, it's hanging on the door, it's on the floor, the stickers are showing you where it's available, Yep. pointing out <laughs> it's a new product. Um, we can make it shelf tags, ba- yep. basically do anything. So there. where do you get the neon signs? Those, come, those are fun. Yeah, those are fun. Yeah, those we are should cool. get you one of these in here. There you uh, go. Just mind a business podcast with a <laughs> with a uh, Anheuser Busch sponsor. Below. That is the spot that we. I want. do. I do want one. So obviously, in my basement, I have. It's a fun little like pub area. Like I got brick walls down there, fake brick walls, and I've labeled it as Benyons, Bennett Benyons, kind of like Benyons, the casino in uh, yeah. in Vegas. So I wanted to get a neon sign, but yeah. you know, getting a custom neon sign. Well, we don't make the neon signs. We just okay. order them, so they. They come from the yeah. suppliers that, you know, decide which logo yeah. they want, what they want it to say, and then we order them and yeah. hang them up. I had a cool neon sign, a Jack Daniels one. Okay. And then my friend stabbed a hole through one of the neon things with a drill yeah. on accident. Sure. So, yeah, that's not a neon sign anymore. Oh, it's oh. just a uh, it's just a normal sign with a hole in it. Right, right. Um, but that's all right. Um, that's all right. So has there ever been a client request or a client to bar, liquor store, whatever it might be, that requests a product that you guys haven't already pitched to them or showed them? Yeah, all, all the time. Um, one of the big ones we get is when people go on spring break and they drink something, then they come back and they want to, and like, well, it's not in the state yet. Yeah. Or people travel to a Vikings game. You know, the, the, the boom of craft beer in the last five years has brought on the onslaught of a lot of breweries that don't distribute outside of their footprint or at all. Yep. And so people go to these places, Hey, I'd, I'd like to get, you know, beer X, Y, Z. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'll reach yeah. out to them. I have no plans to come to North Dakota. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. We get a lot of requests for that, but it, are it, there it, companies like that that just don't want to come here? Well, North Dakota is not really, I mean, yeah, I hear you. Ballpark 700,000 people in the whole yeah. state. They can they're go like, to Minneapolis and they're like, we don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. You got uh, so have you, this is off topic. Well, not off topic. We're talking about uh, beverages, but the company Noka, have you ever heard of that? I don't think I have. It's a, so they sent me a couple uh, free cases of beer and it's a, it's a seltzer, but it's not carbonated. Okay. So the, pretty much the premise of it is Noka. So no carbonation. Uh, the premise of it is that On to you, yeah. the, it's like White Claw. You know when you drink a seltzer and it's you get that carbonation feeling and you have five of them and eventually you're like, God, this is a lot of carbonation. Whereas it's pretty much like a uh, High Noon or a White Claw, whatever it might be, with no carbonation in it. So it's sure. kind of cool. They sent it to me. Um, some of the flavors are good. Other ones are very potent. Sure. But, yeah, I mean, they're just on the East Coast right now, but I know their plan was to move to the Midwest eventually, which sure. is kind of cool. But. And they usually do it state by state, you know. Yeah. So Bud Light Seltzer, when it comes out, it goes national because they have a network built. They they, yeah. can, they can make it, pre-order it. They know how much, you know, to produce, and then it, it rolls out. Yeah. Somebody who's sitting on their couch going, huh, I think I better do this. He's going to go state by state, distributor by distributor. and Yeah. You know. Which makes sense. And they're a super small startup, which is, I think it was like four or five guys that just graduated college. I'm like, ah, okay. that's kind of cool. So, sure. And they sent me uh, free liquor, which you can't complain about. Uh, so you and the team, Magic City Beverage, built some strong relationships over the years uh, with these business owners. How do you create a strong relationship with the people, you know, for the people that are just joining the professional world? What would be your advice to build these relationships? Yeah, relationships really is the key. Uh, making friends is our business has been kind of our tagline. And uh we have about 30 employees now. It hasn't always been that many. Um, 
and the ones that work for us have done a good job in our have long tenure. I mean, there's a yeah. couple guys that have just retired shy of 40 years. Uh, there's a couple guys at the warehouse that are knocking on 30. So, I mean, we see the bar owners come and go. We're, we're there for them all the time. Yeah. We, we see almost every account every week, uh, 400 accounts in our territory. Some of them we see every other week just because the logistically and miles that are put on, you just can't get to everybody. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, in the city of Minot, we see everybody, you know, at least once a week. Our sales guys, there's five guys rolling right now. They're all just knuckleheads and we love them and uh, they do a good job. Um, I can't physically be everywhere. And so they're our extension, you know, yep. and, and those guys are having lunch with them. They're going to Christmas parties. They're traveling. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a fun group. It's a good business to be in. You know, I joke all the time when, Times are tough and we're struggling through a day or a week. I said, God, good thing we're not brain surgeons here. People would be dying. <laughs> yeah. We're in the beer business and yeah. people are still smiling. So Exactly. Uh, so why do you think that these transactions, or not these transactions, these relationship? Wow, I'm struggling. Why do you think these relationships? One yeah, one beer and I <laughs> can't even get my words out. I saw a thing the other day uh, that said there's no way, the one time to convince someone that you're not drunk the hardest to do it is when you knock over a beer and then you're telling them, you're like, I promise I'm not drunk. It's like, Oh, I just saw you knock that over. Uh, but why do you think relationships are important on a non-transactional level? So a lot of times, you know, if you're going into business, it might be like, okay, here's a transaction. We're not going to build this friendship. Obviously, you know, we've worked together doing video stuff, but we have, if I saw you at the bar or something, we could talk like that. So why do you think having those relationships that aren't necessarily transactional is important? I, I just think relationships are the key. Like I, you've got to treat everyone right. You've got to, you know, if you, if you're making enemies in, in our business, you're, you can't knock on the door and ask for anything. I mean, I, I think we run our business ethically. I think we do it right. There are a lot of tough decisions. I'm sure people call and get upset. I've always got an answer. I always have a reason. And if, if I can't get through it, you know, then I'll, I'll make a visit to them. But yeah, you know, there. When you, when you run your business ethically and you, and you run it and you make the same decisions that you make for everybody and you, you know, the way alcohol is regulated, we can't pick and choose. I don't get to choose. I'm going to sell it to you for one cost and I'll sell it to you for a different yeah. cost. I'm going to give you a different deal. Than, so everyone gets how, it the same. Everybody gets it the same. And that makes it a little easier for us. You know, these are the rules. If, if you're selling I don't know, if, popcorn, I mean, yeah. you can go out and say, Hey, I'll, I'll cut a dollar off if you want to buy a little more, but yeah. when it's alcohol, the state regulates. Everyone gets the same price and the same opportunity. Okay, so not so even if people are buying in bulk, it's the same thing. We could, we set deals, but then okay, if that, so there can be a ten, a fifteen, and a hundred deal. Yeah, but if I set that, everybody has the opportunity to, to get, get it, that. and then they get to decide yes or no. I'd it's like not like oh, that. my high school buddy just started a bar. Correct. I'll give him a little. I'll scratch his back a little bit. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So logistically. What is it like, and you obviously weren't around when the business started, but what's it like distributing all over the place? You said you have 400 accounts. That's got to be logistically a nightmare until you have a system in place. Well, yeah, Brad in the office, two girls there. Um, Robbie does all the ordering. Uh, Literally five sales guys. I I, I was chuckling when you said logistics because I used to give a tour to the Minus State logistics crew, and I try to say the word logistics as many times as I could in that hour. Yeah. Kids got a kick out of it. Like logistically, logistics Logistics, are logistically logistically fun. Yeah, there's only a few words there. Yeah, Um, yeah. Five guys are out selling. They're pounding the pavement today. uh, We use a system called Encompass. That it's uh, it's a very high tech warehouse. Um, They are punching in orders and instantly sending them back to the warehouse. The girls are processing them for out of stocks. Anything that you know accounts receivable, there might be something they've got to deal with, and then they send it back to the two guys that are back there picking. Um, Those guys now put those the system has them go in an order around the warehouse that makes yep. it the most efficient they're actually scanning a barcode not grabbing budweiser and then the system tells them grab two of these okay those things go onto a pallet they weigh the pallet the system knows that there's a variance of like four or five pounds and it could could be wrong it might be like six or seven and then they go out they weigh the pallet the pallet passes then the pallet okay. gets a ticket and then it goes and it sits in its row Waiting to get loaded on the truck for tomorrow. So then that pallet goes to that account. That pallet goes to that account. The guys, the guys sell it. The guys set it up, check it off. Then when the guys get to the account, they have to check it off. And then when it goes in there, they come back at the end of the day with their route. Uh, they log through their route. They're done with the day. 
then the warehouse guy goes on and does a lap around the truck saying, what is this? This was broken. Is it yeah. okay? I've got that. So our inventory is, you know, done automatically. Okay. Um, at any given time, you can log into our phones now. I don't know if that's a yeah. good thing, but, you know, 1130 at night, anyone asks if you have a certain beer, you can <laughs> always look. So Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool because I have a few clients that they are product companies. So it's like, okay. You know, maybe that would be advice if they're watching this where you can kind of see the system of you guys have been doing this for 70 years. I assume you've come up with that. That's a pretty efficient way to do it after you've explained it. And maybe people uh, can take that into their own business. So, all right, future Easton here. I just wanted to take a little break to talk to you guys about the rest of the podcast. When we were filming this, we had some technical difficulties with the microphones and cameras in the second half of the podcast. Because I was actually recording the podcast, sitting here talking with Dusty, I didn't catch it, and we lost the audio from the microphones from the second half of the podcast, so we're just going to use camera audio. I've tweaked it to the best of my ability, but hopefully you guys can bear through the second half of the podcast. I didn't want to scrap it and have to re-record everything. Dusty talked about a lot of good things, so I really wanted to get this episode out there. Next week, things will be back to normal. Mics are working well. Everything's going well, but bear through the second half of this podcast. Really appreciate you guys listening and supporting the show. Just want to take this little break to give you a warning for the remainder of the podcast. That is what happened, but we'll be back to normal next week. Enjoy the rest of the show. All right. So before we get into any more questions, we're going to do a quick ad read here from our friends over at Midco Business. Is your business moving up and to the right? Put Midco's business technology to work for you so you never have a slow day at the office. From premium internet service and phone plans to custom private networking and advertising, they have a solution for every type of business, large or small. Get paired with an account representative to create your suite of services and make the switch with ease with dedicated business client fulfillment and support teams. No data caps, flexible contracts with month-to-month or long-term options, built-in DDoS protection, and more. Explore services and request a free consultation at midco.com slash business today. Thank you, Midco, for sponsoring today's episode. I've been a Midco user ever since I started my business, and I've never had an issue with it. So if you guys are really looking to uh, get some premium internet service and the other the other services that they provide, go to midco.com slash business uh, today. So, Dusty, let's get back into a few more of our questions. What is it like working with the team at Magic City Beverage, specifically the decision-making team? So John and whoever else is in that room. Sure. Yeah. Uh just good group of guys. Um, every Thursday at our facility, we meet with all the sales guys and then those guys head out on their daily route. And then we kind of sit up there for a little while and hash out anything that's come across, you know, that week or coming up. Uh, we try to look forward to holidays. We look forward to vacations. We try to decide what are we, what are we doing here? And, you know, um, kind of put fires out, um, at any given time, you know, technology, cell phones, quick meeting, zoom here, yep. email here and there. Um, we, we often joke, you know, every once in a while you get an ad that comes through the copier and it's a fax. What is that? Yeah. Like, imagine business What's that machine that? over there? Yeah. <laughs> and like how, how business has changed it's so fast and you know, a fax, you'd have to send it off. You don't know if they receive it and you mm-hmm. have to wait for something back. I mean, the speed of, you know, turtle speed back in the day. I'm not going to lie to you. The fax machine, I literally have no idea yeah, how it works. It's wild. I, I kind of don't either. <laughs> A bit older than you, <laughs> yeah. like I feel like you should know more than I should, Dusty. This might be true. <laughs> That's all right. You're not the designated fax man. You're the uh, <laughs> president of the party, right? Yeah. There you go. Uh, so how do you how do you go about building a good team of people that are all moving towards the same goal when you're you're going about hiring? I don't know if you're involved in the hiring process, but yeah, um, it's changed a little bit. Um, back in the day, it was you know very very little turnover, and even now there's hardly any. Um, try to promote from within um some of these young college kids have kind of moved on and done other careers some of them have stayed um when you're looking for people usually somebody within your operation knows somebody that's looking for something or you know we'll never poach from another business in my net we'll just mm-hmm. create an ad and let somebody you know come apply. apply and yeah it's uh it's not it's not difficult um there's some new stuff going around with cdls and laws and Stuff like that that might make it down the road if uh, we ever needed another you know, commercial driver's license. That uh, yeah, that could be a little challenging. But uh, I think we've got a. I mean, there's 29, 30 people there right now. It's uh, just a tight knit group. A guy was late to work the other day. The other guy said, "You got to bring in donuts." The next day, thirty guys got free donuts. So <laughs> there you go. It's, it's that kind of business, and it's just a family around a Christmas party tonight. I think uh, 
I think for a few of them have some other obligations, but everyone's coming and they get to meet all their spouses and so, hang out. So why do you think it's important to have, because obviously it's a family run business. It's, you know, there's cousins, there's dads, mm -hmm. there's uncles, whatever it might be. Why do you think it's important that everyone feels like a family, even if they're not a part of the family? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I hope they feel like it's a family. I, I hope they know that there's not a single thing we ask them to do that I haven't already done or wouldn't do. Yeah. Uh, I was delivering beer last night at four o'clock and uh, it is cold. I mean, our guys are busting hump and they are frigid when they come in at night. Yeah. Um, it's no fun having warm beer, but I feel <laughs> yeah. like uh, this is perfect. Yeah. This is perfect time. You know, it's, we just don't even, yeah. we don't even chill our beer. We just let it sit outside for literally 45 seconds. Yeah. But yeah, back to that, I, I've delivered, I've sold uh, nights and weekends, mornings, uh, snow plow, I, we'll do it all. I mean, yeah. there's, not, there's not a single thing at that shop that I don't think any of those guys can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, maybe I can't do the, the computer work that Brad does. <laughs> I can't whip up a quick sign. But, yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's all right. That's why people have specific uh, roles, right? We have an awesome crew, yeah. Uh, so I want to talk about, a little bit about the events that you guys are part of. Yeah. Mainly the fair, the Who's Fest. You know, what does that that time of the year look like? Is it stressful? Mm -hmm. You know, going into that, obviously, you have to, the, the sheer amount of volume you have to have has yeah. to be ridiculous. It's uh, it's challenging. It's fun. Um, we've put a lot of investment into getting some new equipment. Um, we John and I put in a lot of hours that week just to try and not put so much burden on our guys because we have 400 accounts. Yeah. They don't care that there's a concert they don't care yeah. that you know we're busy everybody's busy all the time um we still have operations going on just like normal um, i suppose yeah you still have to fulfill the accounts while the fair is going on yep yep there and you know the fair sells a lot of beer but you know so does our liquor store so do yeah. our bars uh, our partners 365 days a year don't you know mm -hmm. they're, they're not worried about you know nine days, days that yeah. we're working about and yeah, it, it, it's a good 30, 45 days of, you know, getting ready, tearing okay. down, and then trying to survive long days. And yeah, it, it's it's fun. I, events are our deal. I mean, we when you guys are partying, we want to be part of it, you know? I yeah. Mean, I appreciate that there's always beer when I'm at the concerts, yeah, and I can yeah. always go get another one. Right, right. I haven't caught you on any of my fair Snapchats yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'll be my main focus. This do year. you do some fair Snapchats? I, I, I do a fair story once a year, and that's a, it's it. It's, it's got a nice little following, okay. but, you know, the goofiness that happens yeah. at the fair goes. Oh, great. I was, uh, last year during the fair, I was only at the first concert, the Kid Rock concert that never mm -hmm. was. Um, and that's then a I was big in, night, yeah. Yeah, and then I was in Vegas uh the weekend after so, so i didn't go to the i can't remember what the other big one was nelly and cole wetzel or something yeah uh so i didn't get to go to that one but i remember that night was i don't know why but it's in my three years of being 21 that felt like the biggest like yeah night for some reason i don't know why uh, like, and then the concert never happened yeah the old timers at the warehouse my cousin john being one of them um, he always talks about the Huey Lewis concert well, I, okay. I wasn't able to go to that but yeah. I would say Kid Rock was kind of the perfect storm it was very unfortunate for everyone that, that went mm -hmm. they've since been refunded and I think they've been made whole but yeah they, they went, they got to see a show the weather started to turn south yeah. they got to because there was know, an opener wasn't there? yeah I, um, I can't remember who it was but yeah, not the spot I, I can't it was, uh, Night Ranger? was it? God, that might be it I feel like it We're was Sister line. Christian. I feel like I heard Sister Christian for some reason. So they, so they got to see that. They got to hang out. Yeah. They had a few beers. We were selling pretty good. Then they yeah. got to use the restroom and reload. And <laughs> yeah. then they got to just stand there and for, know, drink and yeah. have another beer. And, um, There's nothing there. Never, never do I want something like that to happen again. But yeah. yeah, it sold a lot of beer because it kept that audience People were interacted just, and waiting. They had nothing else to do but drink beer. Right. That Correct. makes sense. Yeah. And then, then they had to buy more beer to throw it on stage. Yeah, yeah. Which was more exciting. Yeah, there was another ticket. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, seven dollars, seven dollars. Oh, that was a bad deal. I hope that never happened again. But. Yeah, I remember, uh, I was upset because I was really excited to see Kid Rock, but mm -hmm. um, that's all right. Uh, yeah. I, I still had a good time. So how do you guys go about building a relationship with these organizations, these, you know, the fair, the Who's Fest? Mm -hmm. You know, what does that look like? Yeah, the, uh, I was glad to see the Hispas back this year. Uh, it was successful and made a good time. Um, so the North Dakota State Fair, we were in the North Dakota State Fair a long time ago, and then um, they decided to, to split off, and then we weren't part of it for quite a few years, and uh, they made the decision to you know get back in the bidding process, and 
Uh, thankfully, we were, you know, awarded it and yeah. we had the advertising contract there. And, and so it's, it's afforded us a, a good chance. We've done some things there. I think the Clydes hasn't been there twice since we've had the contract. And Because um, how does that work? Is it a, so maybe, you know, someone, let's say, not specifically a beverage company, but let's say one of these big events is needs a supplier, whatever it might be. Is it a bidding process and then they just award, you know, whatever company they want to go with or what does that look like? So that there's an advertising contract out there for, you know, strictly having advertising. So uh, Pepsi, uh, Anheuser-Busch um, have, have all put in bids and have been awarded it. Okay. Um, back to being regulated. Is that something you guys put in or is that corporate? Magic City Beverage puts it in okay. and then, yeah, um, corporate helps us out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, back to being regulated. Um, so if you have a liquor license, the competitive nature is structured so that we can't go in and overpower the little guy. And okay. so if, like, if, if somebody's having, say, a cancer benefit at your local establishment, I can't donate you know, a cooler or a bike or a sweatshirt to that person that holds that liquor license because if I would do that, then they might give me favoritism down the road and uh. choosing more of my products. So I actually have to donate to the family or something that they can then bring to the benefit because, you know, you, you, you got to really watch your P's and Q's when you're dealing with alcohol and, yeah. you know, the, the federal, federal government watching on you. So, you know, we're, we're more than willing to have, uh, help out, but yeah, you, it's, there's rules and stuff that we have to follow. You got to cross your T's and dot your I's, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I cross my I's and dot my T's. <laughs> So Dusty, have you ever had any logistical issues with these big events that you're doing, whether maybe you run out of beer? Do you have any nightmare stories that you can tell us? Yeah, well, so you don't just order two, three weeks before the fair. You're looking six months down the road, talking to the breweries about what's available, what we're going to order. Um, we have a specific package in a 16-ounce can that was served there. And so the planning is months in advance. They, uh, of course, the COVID logistical nightmare has created yep. can shortages, pallet shortages. I mean, I talking to a guy the other day, so there's going to be CO2 shortages. <laughs> so yeah, you order it, and then it doesn't show up, and it doesn't show up. And okay. you get a little nervous, and then they reassure you it's going to come. Yeah, it's sort of showing up like the day the first starts, and then Ugh. we have to panic and get it, it chilled down. And Yeah, so there, there's logistical nightmares like that. Um, we've seen it from every supplier. No one's immune to it. Um, yeah, it's just... you. you have what you have and you can't plan on having what you've ordered until yeah. it actually shows up um we had a bunch of semi stuff in south dakota last week and then another guy's going a long way around and so you're getting stuff late yep and stuff showing up all the time and then it's kind of a <clears throat> if you're out of kegs and it shows up you don't let every bar be out of kegs so you, you, throw them a and you just you drive them around and make sure that you know, again, it's their business. It's their livelihood. Yeah. I don't want somebody switching a line because our service has slowed because of a trucking company stuck in South Dakota. Yeah. Um, I don't want you, you know, out drinking, ordering your normal Nick Ultra draft tall and yeah. it's not there and switching to something else going, hey, I like that. I suppose I didn't even think about that because if I'm at a bar and I get a Bud Light on tap, mm -hmm. you know, if they're like, oh, our tap's empty. Your original thought is okay. Now, 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 well, now I'm pissed at the bar, right? Correct. But where I really should be, I should be pissed at Dusty Wall. Somewhere down. The line. <laughs> yeah. I should be. I'd be calling Dusty, say, Dusty, where's my beer? I do get a lot of those texts and pictures. Of <laughs> do you cups. really? Oh yeah, it's the best. Yeah, okay. I said I'll be right up, and I've done that before and surprised a lot of friends. And oh, I didn't mean for you to come up. I said, yeah. Hey, you text me, and that's yeah. right. I didn't know what was out. It must have showed up at four o'clock, and here I am at ten. You know, well, you buy me a beer. Yeah, it's they like, laugh, and I end up buying a beer and it's expensive <laughs> stuff. Yeah, uh, there's actually so customer service is super important in a business yeah, like this. For sure. Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't know if you know who that is, but he ran a company called Wine Library. Okay. And basically, they sell wine. And he said he had some guy order a case of wine, or maybe it was a bottle of wine. And he found out this guy was a big uh, Chicago Bears fan. Okay. So he sent him the case of wine, which is maybe, you know, 100 bucks, whatever it is. And then he also sent him a signed Bears jersey. Wow. Just because. Just because he found out he's like, I'm good customer service. I don't even know this guy. I'm going to send it to him. Sure. And he sent it to him. And he said he was sitting there waiting. And he's like, God, I want, like, I, I want him to say something. You know, like, sure. that's a yeah. good, yeah, he should give me something back. And he said he never heard from the guy. And he was kind of pissed off. And then he said about a year and a half later, 
he got a message from one of the that guy's friends, and he ordered like a whole pallet of wine. Apparently, uh-huh. he was having some big thing, and it was like thousands and thousands of dollars. And he said, "Hey, I heard about uh, your experience with my friend. You bought him a Bears jersey when he got a case of wine." He said, "Thanks so much for being a good company." And then he said, "P.S." I'm a Jets fan. Whatever it is. So uh, I laughed. And that's that's kind of when I that's when I first realized my like, customer service like that means a lot. Even, you sure. know, if I go to a video shoot or something, you bring donuts, like you yeah, said. Yeah. Um, you know, it costs you 12 bucks, but, you know, it's, it's it's good to show the people that you care. Instead of bringing donuts, bring six pack of donuts. Yeah, exactly. They, they'd like that even more. But then when you show up at an 8 a.m. shoot and you bring beer. Yeah, I... Uh, when I worked at Capital Beverage in St. Paul, like I said, when I uh, went up and talked to the owner, Paul Morrissey, who is no longer with us, but uh, I told him that I was moving back to North Dakota and I have an op- opportunity to move into the family business. He said, that's going to be great. I want to be seeing a lot of you. Here's a gift card to Best Buy. Get yourself a TV when you move back. And I went, holy cow. Wow. And like, yeah, what's that, 22, 20 years later? Yeah. And like, Paul Morrissey still made an impact and, yeah. you know, just little things like that. To, and obviously TVs are yeah 2002 it's a 50 dollar gift card yeah it's it's that kind of stuff you know you you just never know when buying a beer for someone in a bar might change their day or you know it's it's a little things we can do and i wish the beers are still costing but uh they were when my grandpa was on by well inflation there's uh my sister sent me a snapchat and she said can't remember that someone in grand forks and they were uh having one dollar beers it was like a tall boy yeah and i was like yeah. Where the hell is that place? I'm there's coming to come there. Yeah. There's some good values in town if you yeah. check out their happy hours. So oh, yeah. yeah. But you, you get them good, and then they know you're going to stay. No, exactly. That's how they get you in there. They get you in there for happy hour, and then you're stuck. That's right. Uh, what do you, you know, what does it mean to you guys to be a part of such well known events, the fair, the Hoots Fest, the other events? Mm-hmm. Um, in a local community, you try to participate in everything. Uh, we very rarely ever say no to anybody. Um, the other day, I said it'd be nice to calculate all the stuff that we have, and everyone said, "Nope, we don't even want to have a clue what we're, yeah. what we're doing." But um, you, you you've got to be active. You've got to be you know volunteering. You've got to be donating. You've got to have your you know you've got to have your your product in people's faces. And yeah. by being at every event, it's uh, you don't know that we're actively trying to be everywhere. You just assume and you expect, and that's what we want. I mean, yeah. if you go somewhere and we don't have something and you're mad, that means you're looking for it. It means you're buying it. Mm-hmm. And then we uh, let you down and didn't have it there. So we're literally trying to be everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So community support, you kind of touched on it a little bit then. Uh, what's the community support like in mine for an organization like yours? Um, on our behalf, like, yeah, I, I volunteer a lot of time to a lot of boards. Um, we chase down, you know, every every aspect and corner of this town, and you know, you you know, you give to the schools, you give to the, you know, the college, you give to pheasants for the future. Anyone that asks, all of our accounts that have stuff going on with a bartender, or a family friend that's having an issue. I mean, they never say no. It's it's you you don't do it for the recognition. You don't yeah. do it for the notoriety. You, you never want someone to say. Hey, they didn't give. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, someone will mention something, but they don't really know that you've already given to it. And yeah. You, you, mine, it's a small community. <clears throat> everybody knows everybody, and you know, it's it's our small part to be a partner here. And you know, you're you're paying the salaries of thirty people, and you you hope that they are comfortable and happy in town, and that they work for a company that everyone you know appreciates and sees. Yeah. And you know, when whenever we can help, we do. Um, and whether it be from the park district at Mesa or MSU, Bishop Ryan, Mine and High, I mean, we don't, we don't ever put our name on stuff that, you know, would have minors associated with it, Yeah, the support's there. And so how would you, if you had advice to someone that was maybe starting a business tomorrow, maybe they're fresh out of college, they want to start a business, how would you advise them to get in the community? Is there any yeah. tips there, or tricks or There's anything? so many different ways that you can volunteer. You can volunteer your time being on a board. You can volunteer your time volunteering for an organization. If, if monetarily you're not able to give, see if there's a way to way to help them out in a different way. Um, yeah. There's a lot of in-kind trading you can do in this town. Um, you just have to treat people the way they want to be treated. It's the old golden rule. My kids mm-hmm. know it. And I, I truly believe it. Like if you you're not a good participant in this town. They're not going to reward you, and if you if you just do things right and play your cards right, uh, it'll be good. I think people. <coughs> ah, 
You got a this tickle in your throat, not a little bit of either cancel. <coughs> oh, wow, this is not a cut out of the podcast. Yeah, I like it. You should leave it in there. Mm. Uh, you probably won't cough. Huh? Um, the elixir. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, I think uh, I think bartering is underlooked in business. Have you ever experienced like, okay, monetarily we can't do this, but let's maybe trade services? Yeah. No, I, I don't, we don't donate beer to anything simply ever. I mean, beer has never been a donation item that we ever do. Uh, simply the legalities of something would happen yep. to it. We're, we're dealing with a product that uh, is watched pretty heavily and we'll, we'll give you a hat and a t-shirt, a keychain and, yeah. and uh, a cooler or something. But yeah, we're, we're never even going to give you a six pack in case it would fall in the wrong hands or go the other way. We're very, very careful about that. I suppose. In my world, that's something I like to do a lot. It's Hey, maybe I don't want to, uh, you know, donate to whatever this is, yep. whatever it might be. But it's like, hey, let's do a free video. We'll sure. do a free commercial. You give me this, whatever yeah. it might be, you know. Uh, yeah. Unlimited chiropractor visits, and I'll just be your in-house media team. Boom. That's something. You're on. That's something. That's, that's smart, smart, actually, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's there's creative ways to go about uh, making these business partnerships. Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges you face at Magic City Beverage? You know, how do you overcome anything that comes up that you really have to work on I, you know when you think about a, a challenge that's coming I, I don't know what the challenge is going to be tomorrow as long as everything's rolling and things are smooth i think we are just prepared and ready to handle anything that comes up tomorrow yeah uh, like I, we didn't know the snow was gonna impact us for three days we thought it would maybe push back one day well, we're prepared. We have extra guys. We're using an extra vehicle. We can do all this stuff. When it turned into the second, third day, and then now we're now we're talking, you know, the challenge to get back. What do we do? Do, yeah. we, do we send out last week's hundred case order and go back this week when we know no one's been out and now they're going to add on a ten, or do we just say your order's ready? Please add on to it. We had to skip a week. Here it yeah. comes. Now you need 140, 150. Uh, and it's just a flat yeah. example, but. Um, yeah, we're, we're constantly trying to update our fleet. We're constantly trying to, you know, purchase vehicles. You're constantly dealing with snow removal. You're dealing with, you know, whether it's in the warehouse and deposits on kegs or pallets are changing or, you know, price increases are always coming. I mean, yeah. you know, I just read an article the other day that the barley prices are up, you know, really high. Well, right. we, can, we can expect that, you know, in a couple of years. So that transitions to ingredients beer, and obviously. Creating beer, barley, and so... <laughs> I mean, you just never know. And I, you know, price increases come from suppliers. They tell us, hey, we're going to go up, of course, you know, and we pass them along. You, you know, that's going to happen, but you don't want them. I don't, yeah. I don't want anyone to be paying more for beer than, than we have to. And when someone passes along, we're a for-profit business. I mean, yeah. you can't continue to, to employ. You, you can't, can't continue take to it, yeah. donate. You can't, yeah. So you, you pass those costs along. So those are just some challenges that, you don't know when they're coming. Yeah. You just have to be poised and ready for them. When Pivot. They come. That's what people say, right? Pivot. There you go. Uh, so, <clears throat> last question I got for you, Dusty, and then I'll kind of leave the floor open to you if you oh, want to say anything. Oh, boy. Okay. What do you think it's going to be? You're an average show. Or you're an average listener to the show. Oh, you caught me. What's today that I listened to you? You said, what's the one question that I didn't ask? Oh, that's, that Ooh, I asked that one time. That but was I don't tough. Think, I don't think I'm going to ask you that one. I'm going to retire right. that question. Right. because This is the, uh, the the Mount Rushmore. Yep, yeah. Mount Rushmore business advice, top four pieces. And one of the, I forget who it was, says, I knew this question was coming. I can't remember who <laughs> yep. the answers were. So I'm kind of in the same boat. I, you know, if there if there had to be four, I, I mean, you Maybe you, short and sweet. You got to be relationships. You've got to take care of people. Try to provide a work environment that employees want to come to work for. Mm-hmm. Um you don't have a hiring issue if no one leaves, right? There you go. Yeah. That's a good quote. Put that on a poster. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, beer, it's fun. Like, I I could never sit behind a desk for eight hours. I just know that's my personality. Um, find what works for you. I mean, yep. if, if you, you like to read books, read books. If you don't, don't. I, if you like beer, check it out. If you don't, yep. I don't. I mean, it'd be, it'd be tough for... You know, someone who is anti-alcohol to work at Magic City Beverage. You know, it's I mean, true. If it's, you're just not going to like your job every day talking about it's it. It's so, an anti-job. They'd have to sabotage from yeah, the inside. Find your niche and do it. Do what you're good at. You know, I mean, go to college and try all different kinds of classes. I didn't know what I wanted to be. Of course, I wanted to be a doctor when you're okay. a freshman year. You know, yeah. 
and then you taste the beer at a different school. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, I want to just so sell this a, for a living. You have an economics degree. Do you ever hear that joke where people? Uh -oh. I think there's a stand-up comedian where he's doing crowd work and he asks someone in the crowd, like, "What do you do?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm a branch manager." And then he's like, "Oh, where'd you go to college? Wherever?" And he says, "I have an economics degree." And he goes, "Oh, you ever think you're going to use that one day?" <laughs> yeah, have you no. ever heard that before? No, I've never heard that one, but that's good. Yeah. And, I don't know, I'm good at drawing graphs, I guess. There, yeah, you're like, oh, bar graphs, super graphs, they're my thing. There we go. Find them, man. Exactly. Well, uh, anything else you want to say before we uh, sign off of the podcast, Dusty? No, I, I appreciate it when you, I, I started watching and you knew, obviously, because you're your parents, and uh, I think it's a pretty neat thing, and reached out to you because of the ghost deal. And, yeah. Yeah. I was happy to get the secondary invite at Magic City yep. Beverage to come down there. So. Well, you know, I was trying to keep the episode under an hour, so that's why I asked John, because I know she'd be short and sweet <laughs> with this. But, uh, yeah, he pushed me on to you, Dusty, and uh, it was a good episode. Where can people find uh, Magic City Beverage? We don't have much of a social media um, following, I guess, around Facebook. I do not have Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and so the reason behind that is... We have a lot of national advertising. Like Magic City Beverage has nothing to do with the Clydesdale Super Bowl ad. It has nothing to do yep. with the money they spend there. Um, we're not behind the Budweiser sign at the outfield. That you know, so yep. we benefit a lot, lot out of their their advertising and stuff like that. I don't. We don't want to get into social media kind of war and mine it about. Hey, how come you're always posting about that brewery? How come yep. you're never posting about us? You get down to a local level. How come you're always posting about this place is special, but never ours? Like, yeah. what if you ask people to, to send in content and then you don't? How do you manage it? Do we need it? And yeah. so we haven't really done that. I, th I think that the point of purchase when you walk into a bar and you walk into a liquor store, that's where our guys kind of excel and try to try to lead the industry there. Um, when you see our brands, I hope, you know, you, you're not buying Magic City Beverage. You're buying the beers that, yeah. you know, you like and... You know, hopefully that we can benefit off your off your choice that way. Yeah. So in there, uh, I mean, you know, if you're opening a bar or a restaurant or something someday, uh, find us the. Yeah. Uh, you can they come into the shop? Can they just go out there by the fairgrounds and just? I mean, we, we give tours. Give yeah, it's kind of fun. I should have you up to the warehouse. I think you'd enjoy it. It's a pretty neat thing. Uh, I've been to the back warehouse when we did the uh, party. That's right. Yep. <clears throat> um, yeah, inside's pretty neat. Like that logistics class rolls through, and the kids are wide-eyed. They, you know, they think yeah. you're just. You know, sitting back with your feet up, drinking beer, and the stuff comes in yeah. and goes up. But yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, yeah, so I guess to answer your question, where can you find us? I, I think we're everywhere. And hopefully, when you see us out in the bar, come up and yeah. mention Bennett Creative Media and the Mind of Business podcast, and I'll buy you a beer. So. There you go. Yeah, that's your that's your plug for the show. If you have listened to this episode, <laughs> you see Dusty out in the wild. Yeah. You got a free beer on him. I'll add to the fun too. If All you right. see us both I'll out in the wild, back <laughs> yeah. If you see us both out in the wild, man, you're gonna get. You know, shots, a whole round for the whole bar. Yeah. Dusty, thank you very much for coming on the show. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. That was episode 31 of the Minot Business Podcast, first episode of 2023. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. We're going to have another good year of these podcasts. Uh, one thing that I never really plug on the show, if you have any business owners or anybody you think might be interested to come on the show, uh, please feel free to reach out, uh, throw their, their name in the hat, and we'll see if we can get them on the show. But thank you guys uh, very much for listening, and we'll see you next week for episode 32.